imagine this. You're a detective, but not just any kind of detective, a molecular detective, whose job it is to identify unknown molecules in a mixture of molecules. We could imagine some sort of method where we observe the molecules in a microscope, but this seems difficult. Another way could be to use some special interaction between light and matter to obtain molecular fingerprints. This is exactly what Raman spectroscopy is. Or to hear it from an expert. A formal answer would be that Raman spectroscopy is a spectroscopic technique that allows you to determine uh, vibrational modes of a molecule. And in other words, it basically helps you to identify a material. Right, so if you have a, a known material, uh, it can be solid, it can be liquid, gas, uh, you can actually identify. Unfortunately, analyzing Raman spectra isn't very easy. It's computationally expensive and inherent uncertainties in the obtained spectra are difficult to overcome. My research revolves around exactly these two problems. One, creating a mathematical model that is flexible yet interpretable that is able to robustly identify and quantify molecules while simultaneously handling this uncertainty, and to develop and implement efficient algorithms to lighten the computational load required to train and estimate these models such that they may be used in real life. I think one of the most challenging things in, in modeling Raman is that the signal itself is very weak. So once we measure the signal, it's, it's contaminated by lots of noise and the actual signal is, is actually hard to find in the, in, the, in the data that we get. One significant challenge in the modeling of Raman spectroscopy is the variability from spectrum to spectrum and from device to device. Right now we are lagging um, the data to capture this variability in our models. So we basically train one model per device and so on. So one of the things we need to do is to use different types of information, both information from the physics and the chemistry that we're measuring, and also information from, uh, that we ex extract directly from the data. So we combine uh, chemical and uh, physical informed models with machine learning to, to extract the, the signal from the, from the very noisy data that we measure. I see that uh, equipment is getting not only cheaper, but also smaller and better. So I believe inevitably in 10-15 years, this will be, you know, perhaps a part of your mobile. You will be able to identify material, you know, at will. If we're able to solve the problems we face and overcome the challenges we've discussed, then we're able to help people in all sorts of contexts. Normal people can just go out and actually start to measure whatever they want to measure. That is the future of Raman spectroscopy. And if we're able to solve all the problems, then everybody can be their own molecular detectives. <laughs>